All right, here they come. They're joining, yay. Welcome everybody. Welcome to our next student panel tonight. Uh, you're a first generation and so am I. I was not a first generation student, but we do have some awesome first generation students on the panel for you. So um, welcome everybody. My name is Mark Von Cannon. I'm the Director of Student Recruitment and Career Development for the College of Letters and Science. Um, that's my office, like right there. Um, that's the building we work in. Not right now. I'm actually at my home, um, as I think are all of our panelists and probably all of you. Um, we would have loved to have seen you on campus, um, but hopefully we'll get to see you in the fall. Um, I've been here 20 years. I, I'm a graduate of the College of Letters and Science, and now I get to work here, which is a real pleasure. So I'm going to let you guys start asking questions. So um, click the little Q&A box if you want to ask some questions. Um, submit them in that Q&A box, and we'll address them as we go. Um, and then so for now, I'm going to turn it over to Nadia so she can introduce herself, and then the rest of the panel is going to do the same. And then we'll start taking your questions. Hi everyone, my name is Nadia. I'm a third year student here at UC Davis. My major is community and regional development. Um, and I myself am a first gen student and I'm really excited to get to answer some of your questions. And congrats, you got into Davis. I'll pass it to Monse. Hi everyone. Um, my name is Montserrat Bersenio. I'm a first year English major at the moment. I'm hoping to keep that. Um, I'm from Lodi, California. As you can see, I'm home right now. I wish I was back at Davis. Um, something about Davis that I, I really, really miss and I really, really like is the tranquility, the people. Anywhere you go, you feel welcomed and I miss the feeling so much. It's like another home for me. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited to help you guys out today. Jorge, you want to go next? Sure. Hello. Uh, my name is Jorge Santiago. I'm a political science and history double major. Uh, this is my second year uh, since transferring to UC Davis. Um, I'm from LA, and honestly, the my bet my favorite thing about Davis is being able to bike around. Uh, not so much right now, but yeah, that's it. Pass it off to Isaac now. Hey everyone, my name is Isaac Ramirez Chacon. Uh, I'm currently a first year political science major. And one thing I really like about Davis is just being independent. You know, you're not with your family, you don't have that many obligations except like obviously your studies but you have a sense of freedom which is pretty cool in my opinion yeah perfect thanks guys um before we get into questions i thought maybe i'd ask a question of our uh, attendees the people who are on the session um just to get a sense of where you're all coming from so let's do this I'm gonna launch this poll here. Let us know where you're from, like where you're coming from. And panelists, you guys can do the same. Awesome. All right, looks like most everybody has voted. All right, let's see where, let's see where everybody's from. So my gosh, we're about, almost 50-50 in terms of Northern California, Southern California. Yeah. And then another quarter, 25% almost from the Central Valley and then some, some Bay Area folks. Awesome. Perfect. Good. So um, we did get a question in here. Um, sounds like you got, we got a couple of poli-sci students in the room. So what are the internships? available for poli-sci students? What does the process, and then maybe if you guys want to talk generally what the process looks like for finding and applying to internships. Jorge, do you want to start? Sure. So the first point um, 
the first place where you would be looking for internships would, would be the internship um, and career center. They kind of help facilitate your um, facilitate the process of looking for internships. And you would also be looking through Handshake, which is an online service for looking at jobs, internships, and other opportunities. And in addition to that, there's also the, the bigger programs, which is the, the Sacramento Center, uh, the UC Center in Sacramento, and the Washington DC program, um, which you can find more information online. Uh, but yeah, those are the main um, kind of areas where to look for internships in regards to political science. Yeah, um, I'm a first year, so I haven't started an internship or anything like that. But my biggest advi advice would be to just like during lecture, that's if we have lecture for next year, to start um, connecting with your professors and your TAs and they can like hook you up with like a research project. I'm currently part of a sociology research project and that was just based off of like raising my hand, like participating in class, something I didn't think I'd like get in my first year. So there's no like specific way to get an internship or a specific way to do things. But I just say connecting with your professors and just like asking around in school. Nadia or Monte, did you, do either of you do internships? Um, I can add a little bit. Um, um, for my major, I'm actually required to do an internship. Um, I still haven't done it, so I'm doing it next year. But I think a really good resource is reaching out to your major departments. Oftentimes, they themselves will have um, opportunities for internships that are directly related to the department. So if you contact the poli sci department, they will have internship opportunities specifically for poli sci students. Um, so I think it's always a good chance, uh, option to talk to the departments and students in those departments as well, because sometimes they know about an opening that hasn't really been advertised that you can just you know email that um, director, whoever it is, and then you never know, opportunities come out of nowhere sometimes. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And also um, adding on, um, one of my classes actually from last quarter required um, you to apply for an internship to receive um, credit for the class. It was an, um, an education class. I intend to minor in education, so that's why I took the class. And um, I had to, for my internship, I had to go to an elementary school classroom and help a um, teacher out and tutor students in, um, math and science it was a it's a part of the math program and so though that's not necessarily a political science related um internship it was definitely an experience where i had to work with a professional in a setting that i'm interested in one day pursuing and i definitely did learn a lot so when um and if you do get to pursue um an internship like take advantage of it and make connections with the people who you're around. And like Isaac was saying, like it can arise from like simply raising your hand a conversation with your professor or a friend, just have an open mindset and just be willing to talk to people. Awesome. That's great perspective. Thanks guys. Um, I wonder what, um, like what was a surprise for you coming to UC Davis, like what one thing was maybe most surprising about coming to UC Davis? Was it, you know, it could be the people, it could be some of the resources, it could be the academics, how hard it is, or, you know, whatever. Like what, what was one thing that was, was a big surprise for you when you came to Davis? So I'd like to start. Um, I think the biggest surprise for me was the amount of support you get in school. There's like a ton of resources for you to use, which I had no idea. I thought like going into college would be like, okay, you're on your own. Um, yeah, you're just on your own. That's what I thought. But there's like um, early opportunity. What's it called? ELP? What, I don't know the full abbreviation for it. But that's a good place to get like um, help especially since we're all like first generation and it can be tough 
sometimes, but yeah, the amount of help in college. I don't know if I have one single thing that I was most surprised by, but uh, at least coming from, oh, I didn't mention where I was from. I'm from Napa, so North Bay Area. Um, and definitely coming to Davis, it was kind of a bit of a culture shock in terms, like I got here and there's literally people from everywhere, not just the state, but the country and even the world. Like it's kind of crazy how diverse the community is, which is really like amazing. You get to learn so much about different cultures and different people. But that was probably one of the main things for me. Um, and just also getting here and like not really knowing what to expect because like my parents didn't go to college. So, um, you know, having to try to find your way through basically everything was like, it was all a new experience. But like Isaac mentioned, there are so many resources here that are there for you to use and they're there to help you. Um, and that's been like a really big um, piece in my experience here. Um, something that was definitely like um, surprising for me personally was all the bikes and all the pedestrians just all out you know I come from a small town I'm from Lodi and so there's people out but you don't see bicyclists and it was just it was a lot to get used to at first especially the first two weeks but um, I attended like a, a six-week program step and I learned a couple tips on how to when to bike the like during the first um a like couple weeks when not to and so that was definitely something that like like kind of scared me and then you see you'll see accidents and you don't know what to do you're like ah, do I help them do I go to class do I stay still do it's but yeah it's exciting though it's it's not like overwhelming it's exciting yeah kind of adding on to what Isaac was saying about support um I come from a community college, a Glendale Community College in SoCal, to be specific. Um, but the level of support was night and day. In Glendale, I had to come up with my own kind of um, plans to get and to end up transferring to UC Davis. But here in UC Davis, um, there's just so much support from the college level, the major level, and the like personal health um, mental health kind of level. There's just a lot of support and that was kind of a, uh, a shocker for me where, where I expected the big population would make it so that support was kind of hard to get. It was just the opposite of that. So kind of along the same lines that everyone has touched on or on, on maybe some of what was surprising for you. And um, we do have a question about whether or not it was intimidating starting college as a first generation student. Do you want to talk about that the transition from either high school or maybe community college like you Jorge um like what that looked like for you sorry can you repeat that one more time sure yeah the question is about whether or not it was intimidating starting college as a first generation student mm. um so transitioning from high school or from community college um was it intimidating coming to a big you know, 30 plus thousand student um, campus like UC Davis. Was that, what, what was that like experience like for you? So when I was going to community college, I was still living at home with my parents. So it was the transition from taking college level courses um, was kind of soft, but at the same time, having to um, come all the way to Davis, moving out, living on my own and with the combination of the rigor of the courses here at UC Davis, it was still very intimidating. I was very nervous, but I was also excited because it was, a, it was gonna be a new experience and it was gonna be the culmination of a lot of work that both my parents and I had put into to try to get uh, a college education. Um, how I dealt with it was kind of finding ways, finding different things that I could do over the summer to prepare, to move out, to prepare for, uh, to live on my own and to prepare to take those college courses.
Um, personally, for me, um, starting college as a first generation student was very challenging because I had I didn't really have other like from my immediate family, no one could like I didn't even know like this is gonna be very embarrassing and I'm going to admit th admit this to you guys <laughs> and I I've never really admitted this out loud before but I didn't know what the difference between an undergraduate student was and a graduate student was as a senior as a freshman I did not know the difference I thought that it was like a freshman sophomore those are your undergraduates and the juniors and seniors those are your graduates so that just kind of gives you a level of like understanding that I had myself my family like they couldn't help me under like my sister went to a community college but she didn't finish my older sister and she couldn't really help me and um, my parents they're you know immigrants from Mexico they couldn't really help me either because they they're trying to understand their own like situation you know and so I was kind of on my own but not at the same time I wasn't because I at Davis I found a support system through EOP and that stands for educational opportunity program and there you'll find um, people who are like us fresh generation they come from a family of um, immigrants they're very diverse or not necessarily a family of immigrants but you know there's there's diversity and the first ones to go to college and that was definitely um, a challenge for me because you start to think like, am, am I even supposed to be here? Like, do I deserve to be here? Maybe there was a glitch in the system and they accidentally said admitted and like at this person's name, but that's not the case. At first it feels like that, but there's a reason why you're here, why you're watching this video. And you'll get through it. We all did. <laughs> And something I want to add to that is, to me, like, starting college, it was kind of like this, like, duality of feelings where at the same time, uh, I was kind of excited, but I was also really terrified because I had no clue what on earth I was doing. And th those first few days from moving into the dorms was just, like, the welcoming. So those first few days really had nothing to do with, like, taking classes. So it was just really fun. So then I remember when I actually had to start classes like it was kind of intimidating like I've never been in this space like all of a sudden I went from like a classroom of maximum like 30 35 students to some of my classes being in like lecture halls um and feeling kind of like whoa like this is huge like there's so many people here but like once I mentioned just finding those resources that are gonna help you um ultimately are like is really key so for me I remember, um, I think it was my very first day of class, I was walking through the Memorial Union, which is like the central hub of campus. And I was just trying to fi figure out like where everything was. And I see this like giant celebration going on in the quad. And it turns out that um, there was this new center opening. It's called El Centro, which stand, which is the like, mm, I guess like name that we call the Center for Chicanx and Latinx. Um, academic su success it's a really long name that's why no one calls it the full thing um but they were just opening it was like the grand opening and it was again like my first day of class like walking through campus and it felt like almost like a to me it felt like a personal welcoming so finding those spaces where you can find community i think is really important and there are a lot of first gen students on campus so you can find people to relate to and sometimes it can feel kind of isolating because like I couldn't go call home and tell them like I'm struggling with this I don't know what to do because like they can't help me with that um, but finding other students that are also going through similar experiences or older students that have already gone through those experiences um, like that was really important for me so I could like realize that I wasn't alone in this and that there's a lot of other people around you going through the same thing Awesome. <clears throat> so um, how about the transition? Um, do you want to talk a little bit about, and I think maybe some of you have covered this already, but um, the transition from living with your family to now being completely on your own and independent on campus, or maybe living off campus on your own for the first time. What was that like? Okay. Um, I'll say <laughs> that first quarter when I was living on my own, it felt so cool <laughs> because like I have two younger siblings and just like being at home, 
there's always something going on and you always have to be worrying about something else so even when you're trying to get your own work done like there's always a trillion other things going on um so I remember those first few weeks felt so weird to me on campus because all of a sudden I realized like I can go to sleep whenever I want. I can eat whenever I want. I can choose to go to class. Like you're not even forced to go to class if you don't want to. So all of these new changes and like new independence was kind of like super freeing and it felt really cool. But it also I quickly realized that there's a lot of responsibility with that because you have to force yourself to wake up early and go to class and get your work done and do all of these things. Um, yeah. I'd like to add on with to what um, Nadia said, and it's true. There's like a lot of uh, there's a sense of responsibility and independence that comes with uh, being on your own, and you just have to remember that. Like I think most of you are adults now, and you'll be treated like adults. So no one's forcing you to go to class, like she said, but at the same time, it's money that's being spent. And it's just being thrown away if you just don't go to class. So it's best to just make the most out of everything in college. There's like free things that are available in college. There's so many opportunities. And you just have to make college work for you as much as you want grades. But yeah, just be responsible. But have fun. I'm going to keep it real with you. Um, I'm just going to add on this kind of is like a, a different kind of perspective too. like um, it is different. You do have to tackle all those responsibilities um, in terms of like you having to be like independent of your like self, your academic work, learning when to say no, like whether, hey, let's go play in the lounge for this many hours or whatever you're doing with your friends. There, there's always going to be temptations no matter where you go. But something else that does get lifted off your shoulders, like maybe at home you have to worry about um cleaning or eating and maybe you don't have those amenities secured for you but once you're at the dorms they're secured for you you have your breakfast lunch dinner for you at the um not at the dorms but you know you have the dc the dining commons that's the dc um you can eat in there any time of the day that you want you can establish a routine your dorms um if you if you're not living in the suite i think they they clean um, the bathrooms for you all the, like every day, at like at a certain time, the times are posted. And it's just nice to not have to worry about, okay, I still have to clean the, the restroom or I have to clean this or I have to do this before I do my own work. And it's definitely an amenity that is nice. I took advantage of, I was like, oh, let me wake up at noon to go have breakfast. But then, you know, but that, that was something nice that I enjoyed this year. Did any of you guys deal with homesickness? Did you miss it? And, and then maybe also another question would be, how often did you go back home? Like, did you find yourself staying on campus until the holidays or, or what did that look like for each of you? Mm -hmm. So yes, I experienced homesickness a lot. Like this is the first time I'm living on my own away from my parents for an extended period of time. Um, and how I dealt with it was a combination of going back home when I could and my assignments would let up um, and talking with my mom on the phone like all the time. Um, I know sometimes we talk for like ages and a whole, uh, like a whole weekend is gone by the time I realize it. And in terms of going home, that really depends on the assignments that I have, any exams that I have, because I know if I go home, I'm not going to be doing, I'm going to be focusing on just uh, hanging out with my family and enjoying that time there rather than working on assignments. So I, there has, there, I try to keep a, a strike up a balance between um, kind of spending time with family and also taking care of this, the academics, which is why I'm here at UC Davis. Wanna, oh, sorry, Nadia, go oh, ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to add on um, to what he was saying about, like, when you go home, like, you're not really going to do assignments. 
I can vouch for that. I you I can't tell you how many I only live from Davis. I only it's only like a forty to fifty minute drive depending on traffic. So I, like he was saying, like I tried to go home as often as I could. When I when I not as often, but because you know school school is very important. Um, <laughs> but I would go home because um, I had a job here too. So I'm like back and forth all the time anyway. Every single time I had the best intentions. I brought my backpack filled with everything that I planned on doing. Ask me if I ever unzipped my backpack or looked at my planner. Not once. I always tried it. Never panned out for me just because being at home, it it feels like you're on a mini little vacation from work, you know, so from school. So if you if you do get homesick and you do have the option to come back, just like he was saying, make sure that your work isn't you don't have a, like an essay due on Monday or something like that, or three projects to work on or a midterm to study for, because otherwise you'll be in bad shape. Yeah, I agree with both of you. And something I want to note too is like homesickness can definitely look very different for everyone. Um, and it can happen at different stages and at different times. So um, like I mentioned, I'm from Napa. So I only live, like my home's only like an hour away. And like, I remember my first quarter, I didn't experience homesickness really at all, but it was in like winter quarter when I did feel it more often, like more often, cause I don't go home too much. Um, I'd go every like three weeks. So about three times a quarter, um, sometime it kind of varies depending. Um, but regardless of like where you are, like if you're feeling homesick, like don't kind don't keep it inside. Like talk to your friends, talk to a counselor, talk to whoever you need to, because these are really common feelings. And often we kind of just bury them inside and we don't talk about it, no matter how far away you live um, from like, however far away your home is, like you still aren't home. And this is a big transition for you. So it's just important to keep that in mind. So I'm from SoCal, so that's like eight hours driving and like an hour plane. Uh, I don't know. But I went to Davis to escape home. Some of you can relate to that. Some of you can't. But I just wanted a new change of scenery. But with that being said about homesickness, just remember that a bunch of the students that are like first years that are with you are also like in a new environment. They're also like homesick. And it's going to be like, relatively pretty easy to make friends like your first like five weeks everyone wants to like have a friend someone to talk to about what's going on and just someone to just just have a good time with and experience the college experience at the same time with you so like I'm an introvert and sometimes like it's like tough to like step out of your comfort zone but I'd suggest strongly to try something new you know it's a new time in your life. So just make the most of it. And don't be afraid to talk to people in the cafeteria in the DC. Something I I want to make a note of is you'll quickly learn that you're going to need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Because whether it is, you know, trying to make friends or just like all of these things are all very new. And they can be kind of scary. But just kind of recognizing that and acknowledging that I think is really important. I do know um, some of my peers, my very first quarter, like they'd get so homesick and like they wouldn't talk to any, anyone about it. And they ended up like leaving within the first few weeks, they just dropped out. Um, and these are actually really, really common things that we don't really talk about. So it's, it's, it's important to, um, like if, if you do start feeling homesick or if you start struggling with your transition, don't think that anything is like wrong with you because it's not. So, you know, get the help that you need because there's definitely a ton of help here. Um, So you don't have to, you know, make such like a drastic decision. So I've written down a couple of things that I want to ask you guys about um, and looking for and finding help is one of them. But before we get to that, do you want to talk about the transition from semester to quarter system? What does the quarter system mean? Um, and then 
maybe like what what the difference is between semester and and quarter and what it mean what it might mean for a student um you know in terms of their what their time management might need to look like uh, for a quarter system so for the quarter system essentially how it's broken down um, and how it's different from semester system so most of you are most likely in a semester system currently and that means you have two sessions fall semester and spring semester but in the quarter system you have technically four that's why they're quarters but there's only like three of them that are um, I guess mandatory um, so we have fall quarter which is from about late September to early mid-December and then there's winter quarter that's early January to mid-March and then there's spring quarter that is like beginning of April. So we just started a few weeks ago to about the beginning of mid um, June. And then there's of course summer sessions, but that's not mandatory. Um, and I would say the biggest difference is, you know, semester system, I can't remember off the top of my head how many weeks it is, but it's, you know, a few months. And then you go into the quarter system that's 10 weeks. So it's definitely much more fast paced. Personally, even though sometimes it can be a little bit stressful because it is fast paced. Personally, I like it more than the semester system. I would always feel like the semester system dragged on. And with the quarter system, um, everything's over much quicker. Yeah, it's a little bit more intense, but you know, it's, it's just 10 weeks and it, it goes by in a blink of an eye. And personally, I like that sometimes, you know, it can be kind of daunting and it might not be very fun, but overall, um, I personally like it more. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Like Nadia was saying, it does go by super, super fast, but because of that, your A game has to be like that much more, like you have to have, I don't know how to like say like what is it 20 out of 20 vision kind of thing where you have to like be prepared like I can't tell you how many planners I have had um these last three quarters and I have like a bunch of like I like plan out my days by the hours I plan like because it, you'll have so many things like going on at the same time in terms of like um you'll have to study for this class's um midterm while also having a reading that's super 30 pages for this other class and then you have a, a meeting that you want to go to for like a sorority that you or fraternity you signed up for it'll be a lot and it's all having to be due within the 10 weeks and you want to keep up and you can keep up so just like having a planner being up to date get downloading um learning how to use google calendar on your phone any devices that would help you out so much so you could stay on top of your things without without that feeling of being overwhelmed so i saw something in the chat saying like how do you prepare during the summer to for davis i would say time management just um know what it is know how to use it like montserrat was saying like you should have planners and all this to like keep and keep up to date with all like the things that are going in your life as a college student but you just have to prioritize, prioritize things. And you have to prioritize that you're a student and you're in college to do like one thing and it's to get your degree, right? But you're also human. So like you should have fun at the same time. So I'd say like having a time management sheet. Um, and yeah, it's not impossible. The quarter system, it's doable. And yeah, just, you got this. That's what I'm trying to say. You got this. <laughs> I love that. Hey, Jorge, do you want to answer that question about um, whether or not being a transfer student might be um, if you feel a little more prepared for um, UC Davis, uh, having had two years at, at the community college? Yeah, so I was literally typing out a response because okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, I did two years in community college. I transferred to UC Davis um, and getting my Associate of Art for transfer degree and I get see. Um, I think it prepared me for how the courses and the routines would look like. 
um, and it gave me the opportunity to ease into a four-year university um, like UC Davis. Uh, it also gave me several opportunities to kind of get into different, um, shall I say, jobs or internships. For example, I was a supplemental instructor for an oceanography class, and that was a lot of fun. Kind of helped me, kind of helped inform a lot of my interests now that I'm here at UC Davis. But I felt that there are a lot of things that I personally felt unprepared for. So moving out of home and getting here, being kind of dropped off in the middle of my um, college career in a new school. So I came to Davis, I was a junior, and I came into my classes not knowing anybody. Uh, so that that's something that I felt like I was unprepared for. But going to community college definitely prepares you for how to structure your day using Google Calendar to kind of plan out, okay, I'm going to study for these amount of hours. All right, I have class in this time. I have to schedule how much time it's going to take to get to that class. Um, that's what it helped prepare personally for. Um, is there any other like follow-up questions you would like for me to answer? I, f I feel like I'm, I'm missing out on a lot be just because of memory and um, Kind of. I, think that, I think that was a perfect answer. Um, okay. I know, Montserrat, you, you mentioned something a little earlier about, um, oh, I mean, I know we've sort of labeled it imposter syndrome, but um, you want to talk about, like, actually, you know, your experience and the rest of you, too, you know, coming in first year um, and, you know, maybe not having the, the support at home that, that a lot of students on campus do. So what did that look like for you? And then going back to um, what I was talking about earlier, putting a pin in um, finding help, where might students go? Like, what are some of those resources that students can find um, help on campus if they're just sort of maybe floundering? Um, for me, like to answer like the first part of the question, um, imposter syndrome, what that looked like for me, um, the very first day, my very first um, English class, I'm an English major, sorry, I can't, sorry, I can't talk. I'm an English major, so I was so excited to go to it. Once I was there, the teacher, um, the professor, not the teacher, sorry guys, yeah, she is a teacher. Um, she was going on and on and on and she was using these words and I was an understanding and I was, I was scared. I wasn't excited after my first class. I was scared. She was saying author's names, book titles that I've never heard of or read before. And I was like, am I in the right major? Am I doing the right thing? I thought I wanted this, but now this is happening. And this was only the first day. And I was thinking all of this and I was going crazy. And then I went back to my, my dorm and I was like really sad. My roommates were, I was in a triple. Um, at the dorms and my roommates were like consoling me they're like hey it's okay like it was only the first day and sure enough like they were right it was only the first day the next class I was after we had done a couple of the readings so excited to talk about what was like the book that we had read or the articles we had read I forgot that was like last year <laughs> but um like I got over it with like like what Nadia was saying earlier you have to be used to getting being uncomfortable and I, that was just an uncomfortable situation like the lack of knowledge type of thing and with with like more classes I got used to it and it became one of my favorite classes my favorite one of my favorite professors really and um kind of to like like not this isn't really like um a resource on campus but you can find like it is on campus actually like if you're at the dorms or if you're like a transfer student like your resources will be the people who you choose to surround yourself by so luckily I was close to my roommates I was able to form a, bond, a strong bond with them and they were there to support me whenever I felt like I couldn't do it anymore whenever I felt like I had too much work or I over or I would put myself if I like drowned myself in meetings or whatever um they like would like relax they would calm me down they'd say okay like you're gonna get through this you can do this and they were right. I did. We did get through it. Like it was fine. So it's like making sure that you have that support system, um, finding your community. Yep. Awesome. I just want to say one thing because my path was kind of unique in that I went to community college, but not a lot of people know about this. I'm going to share this with y'all. Hopefully y'all 
take something from it. But from high school, I had a weighted GPA of 2.8. I was not even eligible to apply to UC Davis. I applied to one school, Cal State Sacramento. I got in, but I felt like high school was not, and um, didn't my high school record didn't show what I was capable of, which is why I went to community college. Now, coming to UC Davis as a transfer student, I acutely felt like I, like I shouldn't be here. Like there's a reason why I had a 2.8, but at the same time, it's like, but I worked really, really hard these two years and I made it into UC Davis anyway. So there was a lot of, there were a lot of moments in, in, in my first year here where I felt like, man, they're talking about things that I haven't even heard of. For example, as a poli sci, you probably hear Duber J's law. You you'll hear like the what is it the the common pool research something along those lines. Like you'll hear these the stuff just brought up and not explained, no context given. And I feel like I'm I'm not supposed to be here. I don't know what that means, and that's that can't be further from the truth. Um, all I needed to do was Google it. Um, simple as that. And I was, I was quickly keeping up with all the vocabulary, all the jargon that is used commonly in poli sci. And it really shows that, you know, I belong here. And I'm pretty sure a lot, uh, a lot of our panelists here have felt that way and have made it through. As you can tell, we're out here succeeding, you know? But yeah. Yep. Um, something I want to know is, um resources and help specifically looks very different for for everyone so you know getting help could be academic support it could be like personal and emotional support it could be like literally like anything and there's a lot of support here um it's like some that was mentioned like i said um el centro um it's like eop the internship and career center we have a student community center, which has like a ton of other centers within it. There's like the LGBTQIA center, the student recruitment and retention center, the undocumented and uh, AB 540 and undocumented student center, the cross-cultural center, like the list goes on and on and on. Um, and for me, I think the main thing that helped me personally was um, I took a first year seminar, which actually all of us in this panel have taken at one point. Um, and it's, it was the letters, College of Letters and Science first year experience seminar. Um, shout out to, or just, you know, pointing it out there. You should all take it if you can when you start. Um, and, and it's not limited to only people in the College of Letters and Science. Um, but that class and seminar really helped me transition into UC Davis and like tackling these um, like mentalities that I had about feeling like I wasn't meant to be a student at UC Davis or at, I wasn't smart enough to get through these classes or X, Y, and Z. And um, it really does make a difference. And finding a community in whatever that, however that looks for you, I think is really important. Um, and just like sitting here right now, I was reflecting and I'm like, I don't understand how I'm at the end of my junior year and I'm about to be a senior because it goes by so fast. So you are definitely, definitely more than capable. Um, but like I said, if you need help, all you have to do is ask because it's there for you. Isaac, you, you mentioned EOP earlier. Um, what are, do you, are there any resources that are available through that program? Um, I know EOP is part of the greater OEOES, which don't ask me what the acronym st stands for, but um, are there any programs that you participate in or resources you got through EOP or e -O -O -E -O -E -S? <laughs> Yeah, um, so EOP, um, there's this program called the Scholars Academy, and that's a, um, it's a program for students of EOP that build a community community within themselves and there's a mentor and they mentor you through like four years of your whole college experience. 
and that's something you can apply to but something everyone can like uh participate in is like free things that they give out so when you take tests i'm sorry if you hear like a bunch of noise it's la um so yeah um something that you will need are like blue books you'll soon find out why you need blue books for exams you'll need scantrons and the eop cottage has a place where you can study and you can get counseling someone to talk to i personally have a mentor there her name's christina and she's awesome sorry about that <laughs> yeah that's why i like davis it's kind of quiet sometimes when you need it to be so yeah um eop is great and there are people there's people there that understand what you're going through so i recommend you to go there anytime they're super friendly and maybe you'll see me there and we can be buddies <laughs> and eop has a lot of um like workshops and seminars they have um for any eop student so you know you you can just drop in whenever um both to their programming and to like their physical space even if you just want to like heat up your food there's a space for you there nice um do you want to talk a little bit more about the first year seminars like what what does what do you guys learn in in those classes and how I know that's how I found you <laughs> to do this panel. Um, so maybe you want to mention, you know, our mutual connection as well. But um, do you want to just tell the students here um, what the first year seminars are, how they find out about them, how they sign up? Mm -hmm. So I don't remember the exact number, but there's literally like a ton of first year seminars. And there's also this other thing called first year Aggie connections they are both very similar. Um, and essentially these are like small groups of students that meet up um, from similar interests. So, and they range from like a ton of stuff. So they go from, you know, academic related to more just like random things. So there was one about like Disney. I think there was one on star Wars, um, like the one that, um, that we did is like first year experience. So helping you transition into UC Davis specifically for first generation students. There's so many of them and it's one is to help you um, find community and it's also to help you gain the skills that specifically you're looking for. Oh, and you can find them if you just go on Google and um, search UC Davis uh, first year seminars. You got like the whole rundown there. And um, I would, if you can, if you have like the ability to like register, uh, maybe not like the first, if you don't, if you don't get to register for it your first quarter, at least try it your second quarter. Most of like first year seminars, I believe are pass, no pass classes. So just watch out how many you take. So like, I definitely encourage taking some, but I believe that there's a cap at UC Davis. I think it's like a max amount of 13 classes that you can take all four years. I, uh, somebody verified that um you should you should check in with your with your college advisor about that that'd be a great idea good idea Thank good you. idea <laughs> um, but i i would encourage it specifically like the the one we all took i believe was like the first the first year experience one i took one my um fall quarter winter quarter and i was supposed to take one spring quarter but because of covid-19 we didn't get to have that happen but um Honestly, it was like I would have I was it was always like on a Wednesday or Thursday and I would have like the longest week and it felt like the longest week sometimes. And then I would get to that class and I was I would sit down and you know I'd be like, "Oh man, another class, another 50 minutes, okay." But then like um Mike or whoever was instructing that day, they would start talking and just the whole room to me at least it changed like you have a person who's like recognize who has like who shares uh um, his or her struggles with you they're telling you about their story their experience their path like and it was honestly like it was like a, a every class was like a reminder of why i was at davis why i have to keep going why i have to keep um pushing to be the greatest and and it's nice because you have people around you who have the same goals as you, who have the same kind of like similar backgrounds as you. And it's just, 
you that's where you really I built a community some of my like closest friends are from those classes and like I can't wait to go back to see all those people again so I encourage to register for even if it's not for that specific seminar or any other ones it's a great way to build a solid foundation if especially if it's your first year Holy cow, if that, if that was not a, um, a really, really, really good plug for, <laughs> for first year experience classes, I don't know what is. <laughs> um, did any of you have mentors uh, or pick up mentors or find mentors, peer mentors, other students who just kind of helped you along the way, whether it was through uh, an official program like EOP or maybe, um, you know, I know Jorge, uh, you're a peer advisor, Nadia, like if you, if you, um, you know, if you, if you pick up a job, like where did you find um, peer support and how did that look for you? So specifically peer support or just mentors in general? Um, mentors oh, or mentors. Yeah. Yeah. That too. So, so peer support for me, at least, um, ever since I met Nadia, um, she's been a great support. I mean, just wonderful. Uh, she's, she's helped me out a lot, uh, because, uh, this year that we started working together, uh, we worked together as peer advisors and we also worked together as peer mentors for one of, um, one, two, two quarters of the first year experience seminars. And she's been great. She's helped me uh, get better at what, I'm, at what I'm working towards. And she's been a great support uh, in terms of just regular mentors. Uh, I would have to say Mike uh, from the first year experience seminar that I took my first quarter here at UC Davis. He was actually the one that pushed the peer advisor application towards me and was like, do it. And he, he, uh, he also nominated me to be a peer mentor for the transfer section in the first year experience seminar back in fall. And then again, um, in winter. So that was, he's been, he's been a lot of help. He's amazing. He's like his story, inspiring his, his, uh, his speeches, um, just great. So just want to plug his name there. <laughs> Um, ditto to basically everything you've said. Um, in terms of peer support, I think that could look like a ton of different ways from, you know, people you meet in your dorm to people in your classes or people in your work. Like, I would say the same thing. Jorge and I have become like super good friends. Um, and literally also same as in for my mentor, like Mike has been the biggest support for me in terms of um, mentorship. Um, oh, we didn't even say Mike is also um, an advisor here in the College of Letters and Science. So a lot of you may see him. Um, um, but yeah, he's been a really great support. And you can, you know, your support system, whether that is your mentor, mentors, or your um, like your friends and your peers, like it's really great having them because they're there for you, like no matter what. Like even when you're in like in your lows and in your highs, they're like they're right there with you. Um, so kind of um I feel like we all have a shared like Mike was kind of like a mentor for me, but not like directly. I would just like because he was like the instructor of the first year seminar class and so he would always check up on every single one of his students. And so, and including me, and I like, whenever I had a problem or an issue, like I would go to him and I would ask him because I felt comfortable with him. But I, I did have other people on campus. I was involved with um, STEP. And if you are a first um, year, incoming first year student, I highly, highly, highly encourage you to sign up for um, the special um, it's it's called STEP. It's I believe it's Special Transitional Enrichment Program, and it's basically uh, like a a way for um, first year students who are first gen who are part of EOP to get like a first look of what it's like to be a student on campus 
and it's a six week program. I know we were limited on time, so I can't really go into like all of the details, but through there, I did have a peer academic advisor. Um, we call it PAC and every quarter I check up with her and um, she like gives me, she's like a third year on campus now and she gives me um, advice and anytime, whether it's personal, academic, like she's there for me. I have her phone number. I could, I'm sure I could call her and she'd answer. And it's just like developing that relationship with like even another, like an older student on campus. It's anywhere you'll go really, you'll find anyone who's willing to help you. That was a, that was a great point. Oh, sorry, Isaac, did you wanna say something? Yeah, just really quickly. Um, it's not bad to have one mentor, but it's not bad to have a bunch of mentors in life. So you can always just go up to people. I, I'd say that Mike is my mentor, but he's not my only mentor. Um, someone from EOP as well. Um, I met Christina L. Jackson, maybe you'll meet her if you go to EOP. Oh, and Christina Jackson, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't know that's who you were talking about. Oh, she's money. Yeah. Yeah. She's so I went there just to just for someone to look over my resume because I was applying to jobs near um, inside of campus and outside, and I just wanted someone to look over the resume, and she was the first person to do that, and just like talking with her. Mm -hmm. She got to know my life story. I got to know hers. And I was just like, hey, like, you're a really awesome person. I literally told her that. I said, you're a really awesome person. Can you please be my mentor? And she was like, yeah, like, why not? And from there, she's been mentoring me and giving me a bunch of opportunities to excel and excel in college. So I'd say just uh, like I said before, like, don't be afraid to get out of your comfort zone. and the fear of failure is not, no, the fear of regret is worse than the fear of failure. Right. Something you'd like to hold on to. Absolutely. Well, I'm jumping back in because we are out of time and I wanted to make sure that you all got the applause that you deserve. Nadia, thank you. Jorge, Montserrat, Isaac, you guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. Any final words, any final thoughts for the, the folks still in our session? Um, real quick, just to, I saw there was an, a question about how to find a mentor. Um, there's no right or wrong way to find a mentor. Um, and a mentor doesn't have to look specifically like someone you like meet one-on-one -on -one with every time. It, it can be very different. So like for me, like I found Mike and that was very like random. It was just through this class that I took. Um, for others, it might just be like, um, it might be your professor that you're really inspired by when you hear them speak. So it can look very differently. Yeah. Yeah. In addition, in, to add to that, my mentor in community college was uh, the oceanography professor who gave me the supplemental instructor job. Here at UC Davis, uh, it's, Mike, uh, but back when I was still in high school or elementary, middle, middle school and high school, it was someone else from the YMCA. It like, it looks very different. It's just someone who can give you that kind of support, help you connect, help connect you to resources um, that are useful to you and kind of give you a lot of opportunities. But yeah, it just, it, it varies. Yep. Awesome. You guys have been great. Thank you very, very much to our amazing panelists. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for joining us. Congratulations. Hope to Congrats, see you. Congrats, y'all. Bye. You're here Hope for a reason. Hope to see you at Davis. Yeah. <laughs> right, yes, you are. Don't be afraid to say hi if you ever see us. Yeah, say hi to us. Yeah. More than Ask happy. Yes. All right, bye, you guys. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.